This meeting is now being recorded. Good afternoon, Derby agents. This is Kevin Shady, Sherm Henderson, Mike Wagner, and Joe Jasko here. I get a little feedback there for a second, it sounds like. But uh, we're here at Derby headquarters, and we're here to talk to you today about eSuite Media and the mobile apps that they've got uh, and how they can be a great fit for your customers and bring them additional revenue generating opportunities, not so much on the cost side this time, although there are some features and functionalities that they could use that can improve their communications and make them that much more productive, of course. But the primary feature and functionality that we're looking at is how to drive and generate uh, repeat sales and referrals. Let me remind you, that the mobile app, that's the primary purpose of the mobile app. From a communications perspective and being able to touch your customer uh, and reach out to them in different ways than what you have had to previously and in a much more targeted way, and Mike's going to talk about that piece of it in a little bit, but you know, part of the functionality between, say, a mobile website and a, a, a mobile app, a mobile website or a website in general, the, the intent of that is to, uh, to, to, to gather new information or get new customers uh, and, and for them to learn about you. Uh, whereas a mobile app, they're, they're already a loyal customer of yours because they wouldn't have downloaded the app to begin with, right? We only have so many apps that we can put on uh, our smartphones and, and have at our fingertips. So if you've got one of your clients downloading your app, then you know that they're a loyal customer and they want to know more about you. They want to know more uh, about what's going on with your business and how it can benefit them, whether it's specials uh, or information, being able to, to schedule appointments or schedule uh, dinner reservations or see new listings for uh, your realtor or more information about the church or whatever it is, uh, the, the business that, that has got their attention uh, and has made them such a loyal supporter. And it could be associations as well, someone, uh, someone that you're uh, looking to support in terms of from a membership perspective or whatever, and you just want to continue to keep that line of communications open. So that's what a mobile app does, say a mobile web website or, or a website in general. And I bring that up because we get all kinds of questions like that. So I'm going to pull up a few slides here if you give me a second. I think you all can see that slide now. Just to kind of give you and kind of rehash some of the facts that um, that Allie and Todd Binkley have shared with us in the past, that, and just on on the mobile industry in general, and that you know 94 percent. Um, so that so it hasn't come up yet. Hmm, it's showing that it's sharing on my screen. Well, let me stop sharing and let me try it again. Do you see that? I see that. You see that? Yes. Well. Hmm. Well, I'm a little technical difficulty here, so hold on for a second. Let me just get completely out of this. Now you don't see anything on the sh on the screen now, right? Okay. Sorry, folks, I, I apologize for the technical difficulties here, but I'm trying to share a presentation, and it's not letting me do it. It looks like it was on my screen. It's just pulling that up. That's not the one I want, though. Is it up now? The PowerPoint's not coming up? Not on my screen. Guys, um, can you see a, a PowerPoint presentation on your screen? Anybody out there? I'm on phone only. I apologize. Phone only. Okay. On no, I don't. So, guys. Okay, 
to leave it open, right? Is it open? This this PowerPoint? Yeah. Right. Go ahead and exit out and now share it. Maybe this is your phone. Now go back and which presentation do we have here? This one. It's that one. No, but that's the folder. That's not the PowerPoint. Where's the PowerPoint? Is that the new presentation? Is it? It's not going to work. I don't know what's wrong with it. No, I get that. Well, I get that. <laughs> I get that. I that. You get that, but you, are you getting the PowerPoint? You're not getting the PowerPoint. Uh. All right, forget the PowerPoint. Let's just talk. You know, some of the stats that you're going to hear about mobile, the mobile industry in general and, and what's going on with mobile apps, you know, there's over 90% uh, of the industry has a smartphone now, and the majority of those are iPhones and, uh, and Android phones. And if you add those two together, they have over 95% of the, of the wireless market uh, for new subscribers, and they've got combined, they've got over 60% of the market in the U.S. now. So they've got more phones are having smartphones today than ever before, and that number is going to continue to climb and climb and climb, especially when nine out of every ten are getting a smartphone. I don't know anybody uh, other than, say, maybe, you know, my parents uh, that want something that's just a continuous old flip phone that doesn't have features and things like that on it. And you're even seeing that age segment as well continue to make uh, the move and the shift to, uh, uh, to to a smartphone because of all the other ways that people are communicating with it. So we're also, when talking about, you know, mobile phones and mobile apps, you know, we've got several different apps out there where we've had a lot of, uh, of success. And some of the success that we've seen have been in churches, have been in um, uh, with realtors, uh, have been with uh, other associations, uh, restaurants, and we've talked about those in the past and the things that you can do uh, with a mobile app for a restaurant, uh, for example, and, and if you remember, that we can actually tie in with eWaiter and you can show how, uh, you know, a, a customer can actually check out and pay for and connect with their waiter and then pay for their ticket without having to ask for it. And that's the kind of service and features and functionality that we're talking about and take them to another level. And and. Uh, the other level that, that's of, of supreme significance and that, that is really huge for all of these, and it can go across all of, uh, of the apps, and that's the, the ability to target market uh, your customer or your client or your member. Uh, so from that perspective, you've got the, the ability to do push messaging, and you can do geo-targeted uh, messages. And we've seen that in the past where you've got this concentric circle and you can you can blow that circle up or you can uh, uh, reduce it in scope to, to uh, target just a few uh, of, the, of the members that uh, customers that have downloaded your app. And you know how many because it's, it shows you in the tool exactly how many uh, mobile app customers you're going to be sending that message to when you, uh, when you release it, when you're doing that geo-targeting. But one of the new features that we're talking about today is called geofencing. And I'm going to let Mike go into how that's a little bit different and that just much more how more specifically you're going to be able to target with a geofence as opposed to doing the old geotargeting way, which you still can do, by the way. Do you have, um, you can pull it up, make sure they can see my screen. Because I uh, shared out my screen. Yeah, I see it. Okay, so uh, thanks, Jeff. So I'm going to reiterate a couple of things uh, that, that Kevin has brought up, and that is. Um, this is, this is an easy sale, guys, and one of the things that we talk about when you approach, you ask yourself, how do I approach somebody with selling them an application? Well, one of the easiest things to do is to walk up to a business owner or somebody that has the authority to make that decision. Just ask them, what kind of phone do they have? What kind of smartphone do they have? What do they use? Do they use an app? What type of app do they use? Because think about it, a, using your phone for making phone calls, that's an app. Using it for an alarm clock is an app, right? Everybody's using these apps these days to actually go out and, and alter and enhance our lifestyle. So businesses are no exception. So one of the things I want to talk about, I want to, I want to kind of drill down on what Kevin was saying, and I think the coolest new feature that we have now available, it's released, it's live, it's GA, it's ready for everybody to use, and that is the ability to do geo-fencing. 
So like Kevin said, we could actually do geo-targeting. In the past, now you can do fencing. So um, on the screen, this is actually how you would set up one of these geo um, uh, messages that will come out on the phone as a push notification uh, on the end device. And uh, it's, it's really cool. So for example, let me kind of tie down uh, the restaurant industry and how a restaurant might to uh, leverage this, this feature. So every restaurant in town, if you talk to anybody that's responsible for that restaurant and you ask them what keeps them up at night, they're all going to say quality. They're going to say the bathrooms need to be clean. They're going to say the service needs to be impeccable. The food needs to be consistent. And the hot food needs to be hot, the cold, cold. And they're, they're, they know it's an extremely competitive landscape that's out there. Well, what if we could put in their hands the ability to make their restaurant more visible than their competition. So give them that chance to go in and actually win that business. So, uh, so follow along with me on this message. So this is what would come out in the push, in the push message uh, on the phone when we send it. So let's say uh, something like um, um, half off um, bone in ribeye, right? So that's what would come across. You can see how it's kind of displayed over here. And uh, I'm, sen I'm sending it to Apple and Android users. I can also post this message to uh, Facebook and Twitter right from here. So it's a single, single shop, single stop shop. But here's what's cool about it. Where do I want to send this thing? Where's my audience located? What does that look like? Well, Kevin was talking about the, the uh, geo-targeted solution, and that's what you see right here. So right now you would see anybody in this circle would show up if they had the app, and you can see immediately how many Apple and Android users would be a, a part of this particular geographic target. Let's go ahead, and I'm going to do something pretty clever here, and I'm going to find uh, Stony River, or no, actually, why don't I do the Summit in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. So if I pull up the Summit in Louisville. It'll move me over to the summit, and then you can kind of see the little red uh, pin is right there. And then if I want to get real clever with it, I can pull up a satellite image, and I can show. Uh, pull up a little bit? Can, I, can you zoom in on it? Yep, I can zoom in on exactly where the summit is. And the summit is a series of restaurants and high-end stores and this little horseshoe that you're seeing right there. And then... Um, what I can show you is anybody, we'll make this a little bit smaller. As I zoom in, And I know that this is a restaurant in the summit that I'm looking to, uh, to target. So in this particular example, if I wanted to, I know that this area right here, right on this pin, that happens to be Stony River. Anybody that happens to be there, I can send them a message now. I can schedule it. I can do whatever I want for it. Okay? But what's really neat Let's say, for example, it's a competitive landscape, and I'm interested in moving, moving this particular target over here to the parking lot, okay? I'm losing business from here over to this fish market that happens to be in here, and I know that all of the people that go to the fish market park in this parking lot. Well, let me create a little fence, okay? Bear with me. I'm going to create a little fence for that area. Okay, zoom in, kind of play with it a little bit. I'm going to zoom in on that parking lot right here. seeing that. 
basically allows you to set up any kind of dimensions that you want, right? Absolutely. So I'm so, set, yeah. So you're not just using the, the concentric circles like you have uh, with the geotargeting. You can formulate the area that you're wanting to have the fence around to be a specific shape and size because streets and, and driveways and, and parking lots come in all different shapes and sizes. Not all circles. So, so as you can see, what I've done is created a fence right here that's showing anybody that happens to break that fence, I can send them a push notification to say, you know, forget about going to Mitchell's, make your way over to Stony River and get a half price steak tonight. Now I can get more people in, sell them more drinks, drive business, and improve the quality of their overall experience. Very, very, very powerful stuff. So the second I break this fence, is the second that a push notification comes down to my particular phone and gives me specials. This is a competitive example of how I can drive more business to my restaurant as opposed to my competition across the street. You know, another application that folks can do with this are the, are the realtors, and we've got a couple of, of realtors that are developing their apps uh, down in the Ashland area, Ashland, Kentucky, uh, out uh, just past uh, uh, the Covington, Cincinnati area. And, and what they're doing is they're going to use uh, the geofencing to set targets around streets uh, where they have listings. So they'll tell their, uh, their clients to just download their app, and then they'll set up a geofence uh, that's within uh, a few blocks uh, of some of the, uh, the major thoroughfares that are surrounding those listings that they have. And when they break that fence, which means they're driving on that uh, main thoroughfare, up will pop a message saying, hey, you know, there's a great listing here uh, by, uh, uh, you know, from your realtor and, and just to kind of remind them. Uh, and they're, they're in the market or they wouldn't have downloaded, again, they're, they're loyal or they're in the market in this instance, or they wouldn't have the realtor's app on their phone to begin with. So they want those messages. So I hear folks talk all the time about saying, you know, what about getting bombarded with push messages, especially if you're setting up geofences that don't have any kind of a, that don't have to have anyway, any type of a time-sensitive uh, nature to them. They can be on for weeks, months, even years, and just continue to have that message out there and available once somebody breaks the fence. Well, you wouldn't have downloaded uh, the Realtors app if you didn't want to know that information. So you're not going to have a lot of customers. In fact, I don't think you'll have any that will want to or they'll have a problem with it. And when they have to start getting too many messages, they can, you know, they can make the app inactive and it's not going to get those messages anymore. Absolutely. And another application that we're doing with the, with the, uh, the geo fencing is we're building corporate apps now. So corporations, um, like we're talking to Texas Roadhouse about having a corporate app because they have a, a culture within that organization and when employees walk into the corporate headquarters, they need to be notified of certain things like uh, the annual blood drive or the United Way donation or enrollment periods or, you know, we just opened up a new restaurant in such and such a place or anything of that nature. And by virtue of them just going through the parking lot or actually walking through the corporate door, it's a great way for them to communicate and for the CEO of the company to communicate to his employees. He, he loves sending and communicating to his employees and sending them different feel-good messages. He likes talking to his marketing partners and franchisees. Uh, and this is a tool that they're investigating right now that gives him that level of, uh, uh, of power, if you will, his ability to do that and actually wow you just by, be, just by breaking uh, a particular fence, a particular geographic fence. So that, uh, use your imagination when it comes to how you can leverage this particular tool. These, these push notifications can be sent out and scheduled. They can, we can send graphics across the phone. Uh, we can send URLs to ask them to do something from a survey to a, a login to sending them to a URL or a mobile-friendly uh, website like Kevin was talking about early. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do with it, and there's a lot of value here for not a whole lot of money. You know, a couple other features um, uh, as we, you know, move on to additional uh, developments that uh, eSuite has done with the mobile app uh, services that you can get now for your customers is one, in, in the past, 
you may remember that uh, the tell a friend or sharing your app uh, with another customer or with a potential customer only shared that smartphone that you used. For example, I have an Android phone, so if I tried to share an app uh, with uh, another person, and sent, it would send them a link, but it would send them the link from my smartphone app, so it would send them a link to Google Play uh, in the Play Store so that you could download the app. But if you're an iPhone user, that link's not going to do you much good. So what they've done is they've changed it so that uh, when, you, when you try to share your app now uh, with somebody else or, or, or refer a friend or tell a friend, you'll actually share, send both links. So whether they're an iPhone user uh, or an Android user and whatever type of smartphone they have, they'll get both links. So they can click on the link that's appropriate for their smartphone device uh, and be able to then uh, go straight to uh, the, I the iTunes Store or the Play Store and Google Play and go right straight to the app without trying to search for it and then just download it and install it onto their device. So that's something that uh, a new development that they've used to, uh, to, to really improve things from a, a service uh, perspective and, and a referring perspective. It didn't make any sense. I could never send Mike, for example, who's an iPhone user, uh, a referral for an app because I'm on Android and he's on iPhone. It just wouldn't do him any good. So they've, they've corrected that. They've added features uh, for uh, realtors that are real more realtor centric and can allow you to uh, do more things with listings, do uh, live tours, uh, and, and with some other partners that are with eSuite uh, that allow video tours and, and full motion tours that uh, the realtors, uh, uh, those are the latest and uh, kind of techie tools that uh, the realtors are using to kind of differentiate themselves from their competition and, and how, help them to market homes faster and quicker, as well as to gain listings. So if you know that you're getting ready to list your home, you're, you're, you, may, you may pick one realtor over another just because of the presentation and the methods that they're using uh, to promote your home and, and get it sold more, more quickly and, and, and easily. So uh, they're, it's another way that they're trying to use the tools around there. But, you know, we talk about these features all the time and, the, uh, and, and what you can do with the app, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, how, how do you start the conversation? And we, we, we try to tell everyone to, to keep it simple. You know, don't try to go into all these features. It's nice that you know them all and, and, and what they're capable of for when you're ready to have those conversations and when your client is ready to have those conversations. But initially, you want to keep the, the conversation very general. And by that, I mean talk to them, ask them what kind of a smartphone device they're using. Do they use an iPhone? Do they have an Android? Why? Why do they like an iPhone? Why do they like their smartphone? What features do you have? You know, and what's your favorite feature? And let them talk about it because that's the one thing that uh, uh, the Binkleys always tell us is that everyone likes to talk about their phone and everyone likes to talk about why the iPhone is better than the Android or the Android is better than the iPhone and, and why they like their features and, and what it does for them. Oh, it makes it real simple and easy. It's right there at my fingertips. Oh, yeah, and they'll just go on and on and on about it and let them. And then at the end, say, well, you know, let me tell you a little bit about what we do. You know, we, we develop mobile apps for businesses just like yours. And what we do is we allow you to communicate and provide that same easy information that you're talking about that you like with that app that you, you were describing and provide that to your customers right at their fingertips, right at their phone, you know, on, on a device that they look at more than 100 times a day. I, I can probably venture to guess that everybody's looking at their cell phone right now you know, even while I'm talking, because that's just what we do. You know, I'm looking in here, and three of the four are, all, are on their cell phones right now, and I understand that, and, and that's just the way the society is. So why not take advantage of that device that they're using every day, hundreds of times a day, as opposed to TV ads or newspaper ads or Yellow Pages ads, which, you know, good grief if you're using Yellow Pages uh, to try and reach uh, the consumer these days. Or even the website. You know, the websites are great and they're necessary, but, uh, you know, we're not on our websites. We're not on our laptops, even the tablets, 24-7 like we are the mobile phones. So just keep it simple. Keep it easy. Get them talking about what they like and what they understand. And then you can start getting into more of the benefits and the features and functionalities that are capable and, and, and available within the app. Because you know, otherwise you start getting it too technical uh, and you're going to scare folks away. And needlessly, and they don't, you know, they really can use and take full advantage of an app, 
but uh, you know, only 20% of the businesses out there actually have a mobile app developed. And I think that number is probably a little high. So what you can see on the screen here is that is actually Texas Roadhouse's corporate headquarters, uh, international corporate headquarters. And that's how simple it was. Just go ahead and put a little little geofence up there so that when they pop into to the office for the day, uh, based on a time stamp or a schedule that I put out there, it will actually pop in on their phone and tell them a little something that they may need to know for the day. So it's very, very, very powerful, very powerful. It also allows them to kind of um, accentuate the culture of Texas Roadhouse by having their own app, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And what would it be like if you could just get all your employees, hey, pop on in, get a, a free blossom, you know, and go on in, or go out there and put something out there against, uh, you know, when they're about to go in between Outback and Texas Roadhouse. Where you can There's a lot you can do. No question. So we've talked for quite a bit. Why don't I open up and see, do you guys have any questions out there? What are some areas that we can help you with in terms of uh, positioning the mobile app or some thoughts or opportunities you think might be a good uh, uh, situation for you? Crickets. Any questions? You guys are awful quiet. Well, I know you're on the call because of for a reason, and I know you're not on the call just sitting around wasting time. You want to know more about the mobile apps and how you can market and position them. Remember as well, uh, there's a promotion going on right now of a thousand dollars up front for every mobile app. So that client pays. $3,000 for the design fee, and a, thir a third of that, $1,000, is going to you. Uh, now, if you want to reduce that, uh, that fee to $2,500, you are more than welcome to. Uh, if you need to, I would not recommend it, because from what I'm seeing out there, uh, the clients are more than willing and able to, to pay for that upfront fee. Uh, and, you know, and, and compared to ad agencies out there uh, within your community, uh, this is a bargain, uh, a tremendous bargain, because they're going to want upwards of 10, 15, 20. I mean, Roadhouse spent over $20,000 for their app, wasn't it? Or even more than that? Oh, no, no, a lot more than that. A lot more. A lot more. So we're talking about a real economical way for your clients to take advantage of it. If they have multi-locations, you understand that it's, that it's just $50 for each additional location on a monthly fee. It doesn't impact uh, the, uh, the upfront fee because it's just one app, right? So it's just one design fee. Uh, to take care of all those locations. And there's some developments there as well. They can design a whole page that's just for uh, that location and, and can tie you into the specials that are going on there uh, and, and make it that much more productive for folks. So there's a lot that we can do with the app. At the end of the day, you've got to ask your client, what is it that they're wanting uh, to accomplish? What do they want the app to do? Are they wanting it to promote specials? to have loyalty programs, to have, send out couponing? Do they want them to be able to uh, uh, do uh, more of an online e-giving or uh, e-payment type of scenario? Do they want to do web commerce? Uh, what are they looking to accomplish? Or are they just trying to, to communicate and be able to schedule uh, appointments or meetings or whatever uh, and, and communicate more effectively uh, with their clients or just dump information? You know, and you can just have it so that it's information for the most part. At the end of the day, again, it's, it's what the client wants to communicate and how they want to communicate with their customer. But at the end of the day, it's what the customer wants to receive from that client. Because you can push all the information you want. If you're not pushing me out anything that's relevant, that's, that's new, that's fresh, uh, I may have it for a while. But eventually, you know, you're going to go to the back row, uh, if not into the, into the bin. Uh, and, and never see you again on my mobile device. And we are selling the apps. The apps are being sold. So who's that? I was just saying it was a good presentation. It makes a lot of sense. I like it. What do you think of the fencing feature? 
I like that. That's the, that's what I like a lot. Um, I think it's a uh, it's something that uh, people have been doing in the past, not to this degree. And but I like the way it's set up. Um, I can see some opportunity. Well, Jeff, if you've got any opportunities that you want, you know, Atlanta's not a far ride from me, and I can also, you know, do some connecting with uh, with Ron Wheat and Michael Woodruff down there in southern Georgia. So let me know when you're ready to hook up, and I'll uh, I'll be more than happy to drive down. Well, let me get I'm trying to give some trying to take the idea now and uh, get think of some specific people to take it to. But I do like the way it uh, I do like the opportunity. The apps are selling. People are selling these apps. So uh, speak up if there's any opportunities you're not sure of. Let us know, and we'll help. Yeah, I'm definitely uh, realtors, uh, realtors, restaurants, churches, churches, uh, associations. Uh, they're all coming on board. And, and again, you know, uh, only 20% of the companies and uh, and associations, and I don't think associations is that high. It's probably more like 2%. Uh, have actually developed their own mobile app. And even those that have developed a mobile app, don't think that that means that uh, there's not an opportunity there. Texas Roadhouse has an app that they've developed, uh, and they don't even realize that they've got three different mobile apps, one for Android, one for iPhone, and one for iPad. Uh, and if you ask them, they, wanted, they, they, don't, they don't believe it until we had to show it to them, that they actually had three different apps that they're managing and it's not bringing any additional information for them. It's more of a tool and a toy for uh, uh, their, their clients' children to use and maybe to do the, the call-ahead seating. We're talking about the much more interactive uh, and, and promoting the business uh, and, and promoting to your clients and your, your opportunities uh, to them and, and getting more tables turned as well as uh, more sales in. Well, the app has to do something for the consumer. Absolutely. You know, and that's what I was talking about. It's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a, you know, there's a balance there that you've got to do between the client that wants to push out information and promote to the, to, to the customer compared to what the customer is wanting to receive. And at the end of the day, the client wants to do whatever's best for their customers. And if that's promoting, then it's promoting. If it's providing information, then it's providing information. It's providing additional service that makes them faster, uh, for instance, being able to check out faster or to alert my waiter faster, you know, pay my bill, whatever, uh, or, or get a coupon easier and simpler or some sort of a discount, then, you know, that's what they're looking to do. And that, that, that flushes out in the conversations. You guys don't need to go there during that time. That will all come out because once you, got, once you get that client to start thinking about the mobile app, then they can tell you all the different uses that they can have for it, whether it's from a, a service uh, or a productivity standpoint. Anything else? Guys, any other questions out there? I just have a comment. This is Andrew Meltzer. And um, Todd, uh, uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, I, I just want, I'm now working with Todd on two different uh, opportunities, and I just want to express that Todd has a unique ability to understand the client's need. And he's a, a very, very patient um, person when it comes to, you know, listening and then applying uh, what the, the client's really trying to achieve into an application. So it's been a pleasure to work with you thus far. Great. And, and, and I believe you guys, do you have the one, that one of those closed already or are they about to close? I got two of them. Um, I'm, I'm about to tag Todd with this the second one uh, in, within a week period of time. So, And they're both big opportunities. Hey, Andrew? Yes. What, what type of industry is each app in? Well, what the, the industry that we're working on right now uh, is heating and air conditioning. Um, I have uh, a forward-thinking client who wants to automate his business using this app. And the other one is uh, online education. Um, and he wants to use the app to uh, bring people to the uh, site. 
that's pretty good. Um, Kev, why don't you tell them about the uh, little streak that Kevin Roof had going with the Catholic parochial, from the Catholic school, elementary school, and the high school, what you're doing there. You mean with Trinity High School yeah, and St. Margaret Mary? Yes, yeah, St. Margaret Mary. Right. Well, Kevin Roof, an agent here in town, uh, here in Louisville, uh, has connections and was able to get uh, Todd and his team in to, to speak with Trinity High School. Their app is in development. Uh, it's actually uh, uh, in, in the final stages of development and will be live in time for them uh, to get into the summer, and they're going to be developing it more and, and using it to recruit new students, uh, to inform parents, uh, you know, whether they're uh, existing parents of students, of existing students, or parents for incoming uh, students that will be freshmen uh, this fall and, and being able to uh, promote and communicate to them. Uh, of course, they've got all the sports and athletics and all the other different departments that they're using to communicate it with. And then as well, then you've got St. Margaret Mary's uh, that's uh, uh, more of a retail, or not retail, a, a secondary elementary school. And, um, you know, they're, they're also a church, and they're going to combine church functions along with uh, the, the school and daycare type functions that they have uh, within them, and then you know, and then I've talked with, and we've got uh, signed up just recently the Kentucky Baptist Convention, uh, that uh, is the association uh, from a missions perspective and works with 2,500 churches uh, within the state of Kentucky. Uh, we're going to be branching that out to the Southern Baptist Convention that has 45,000 church members uh, across the country and working with their uh, IT and technical teams. So we've got some great opportunities that are working. I've got another church here in town. It's another Baptist church. Oh, actually, it's not even a Baptist church. It's the Northeast Christian Church uh, that, that they're going to look to start developing their app uh, and how they can interact it with their existing um, web online giving uh, service that they have and what we'll, we'll look to integrate with them uh, come mid-June uh, after they get back from a conference with those folks. So just, uh, just kind of gives you a feel for some of the different uh, functions that we have, again, the guys in Ashland that have the realtors are, are starting to make uh, a lot of progress with them as well. And, you know, basically anybody can, can use an app. We've just been trying to focus on those markets where we've had some quick and immediate success, and that seems to be in the realtors and the churches slash schools. You look at Trinity High School here in town. You've got the Garland Christian Academy in Dallas, the Trey. Anderson and Rescue Communication is brought to the table. Uh, the, the application that Mike talked about uh, with the Chesterfield Water Company was just extremely unique uh, and, and the situation that they're using to help uh, actually monitor their customers' usage and it can communicate when there's a, uh, some sort of a water problem that, that might be occurring you know, based upon their averages and they see something going uh, way above average. They know that, hey, something must, might be left on at a customer's location and and they may not be home to turn it off, so they can alert the customer uh, that they've got some kind of a of a situation at their uh, at their home or their uh, resort or, or cabin or whatever it is that uh, they're using the water company for. So there's just so many different features and functionalities that you can do with it. Anything else, guys? Any other questions out there? Well, if not, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, again, this will be available, the video replay of this will be available uh, on our YouTube, the Derby Agency channel, and just to give you a, a new development on, on that, within the Derby Agency mobile app, you can now watch uh, all of the previous uh, Derby weekly calls that have been published and are posted on our Derby Agency channel on YouTube. You can go straight to it from the mobile app. If you just click on, on more, uh, after you sign in or you have to pull the app up, you click on more, uh, which shows you the, the additional functions that are on there from Derby. You go to the social media tab and you go to, to, um, uh, to UBook for the Derby or YouTube for the, the Derby Agency channel and it will pull up all of the different uh, videos that we have published out there and you can watch it now from your mobile phone. Cool stuff? It's fun stuff, guys. I hope you take advantage of it and get involved with it. And uh, it's another way to differentiate yourself with your customers, and you know, and not just be the telecom guy, and not just be 
the medical billing guy and not just be a realtor or a financial advisor or consultant uh, or or anything else, uh, you know, from the uh, call center services or what have you, and just find a way to differentiate yourself and provide more value to your client and leverage those relationships. So if you have any other questions, remember, $1,000 for every app that's sold up front through the end of this quarter. If you have any more questions, feel free to give me a shout. Thanks, everyone.